Hi there, my name is Paul Antai. I'm currently a research scientist from NVIDIA Research. In this video, I'm going to present our work, SafeCracker, Leaking Secrets Through Compressed Caches. This work was done while I was with my previous affiliation, MIT, and it's a joint work with Andrea Sanchez, who was a visiting student at MIT and now at EPFL, Professor Chris Fletcher at UIUC, and Professor Daniel Sanchez at MIT. Let me start by giving you the high-level picture for this project. We present the first security analysis of cache compression, and we point out that the compressibility of a cache line can actually reveal information about the data. And moreover, we show that a malicious attacker can leak secret data if there is attacker-controlled data collocated with the secret data in the same cache line. To illustrate the key insight in the paper, here is a simple example. The victim is a program using a secret key to encrypt data. The attacker tries to steal the victim's encryption key and can submit encryption requests to the victim. On each request, the victim's encryption function stores the key and the request consecutively, so they fall on the same cache line. There are many possibilities for this collocation to happen, which we will present later in the video, but for now, let's just assume that they are allocated back-to-back -back in the memory. Suppose we run this program on the system with a compressed cache that tries to shrink each cache line by removing duplicate bytes, for example, the repetitive value 1 here, then the cache line only takes 7 bytes in the system. And if the attacker can measure the line's size, it can learn all bytes of the secret key by trying different plaintext in the request, because the size of the compressed line will change if a byte of the key matches a byte in the request. In the paper, we actually show that by leveraging this vulnerability due to hardware cache compression, the attacker can compromise the secret key very efficiently in about 10 milliseconds. We also found that when combining this vulnerability with other latent memory safety vulnerabilities such as buffer overflow, the attacker can potentially leak a large fraction of victim memory. As you might know, there has been many hardware side channel attacks in recent years, such as Spectre and Meltdown. To understand the key difference in this paper, it's helpful to put this attacks and our attacks into a single framework to compare them. Here is an abstract view of side channel attack, which Kransky et al. introduced in Micro 2018 to understand and classify attack types. An attacker process seeks to learn some secret data from a victim process, but they reside in different protection domains. So the attacker resorts to a side channel that conveys information through an implementation specific detail, such as microarchitecture state, to extract the secret from the victim. To explore the side channel, a transmitter in the victim's domain encodes the secret into the channel, which is then read and interpreted by a receiver in the attacker's domain. For speculation-based cache side channel attacks such as Spectre, the side channel is the presence of a line and its address. The transmitter is speculatively executed instructions that alter cache states and the receiver is the timing difference when accessing various locations in the memory to infer a line's presence. For compressed cache attacks, the side channel is the compressibility of the cache line that contains the secret. The transmitter is simply any update to the cache line, including the secret itself or the data in the same line. And the receiver is the timing difference to infer the compressibility of a line. Note that those compressed cache attacks are different for many speculation attacks because they do not rely on speculation to leak data. In fact, this new hardware vulnerabilities has never been studied before. Now that we understand the key takeaway of this, this paper, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to first explain the background knowledge on cache compression so that we can better understand our attack. And then I will introduce the first attack, pack and probe, which allows attacker to measure cache line compressibility. Then the second attack, safe cracker, which allows attacker to exploit data collocation to leak secret. I will also talk about potential defense and show the trade-off between security and performance. 
as data movement becomes increasingly critical, compression is an attractive technique to improve memory performance. Compressed cache provides higher effective capacity, which leads to higher cache hit rate at the cost of somewhat higher hit latency. And it is particularly beneficial for large caches that already have high access latency, such as the less level cache. Over the last decade or so, compressed cache has received intense development from both academia and industry. Here I'm just flashing out papers in top tier conferences that focus on compressed caches. While we're not aware of any commercial system that use general purpose compressed caches, we believe right now is the perfect timing for the technology to not only improve the performance, but also understand the security implication so that we can prevent another potential security crisis like Spectre. In the center of cache compression techniques, there are two main ingredients that decide the effectiveness of a compressed cache. First, the architecture, which aims to quickly locate variable-sized compressed blocks while keeping them compact. Second, the algorithm, whose target is to compress each cache block as much as possible with tolerable decompression latency. And in this work, we focus our attacks on a commonly used compressed cache baseline, variable size cache or VSC compressed cache architecture, base delta immediate or BDI compressed algorithm. Even though we engineer our attacks assuming these baselines, our attacks can be applied to other architectures and algorithms and will lead to different characteristics of about the leaked data, which I will discuss later in the video. Now, in order to understand our attacks, let's talk a bit more about those baselines. And we'll start with how VSC improves over conventional cache architecture. Conventional caches without compression only manages fixed size blocks. For example, in a two-way set associated cache where we have tag array and data array, each cache tag responds to a fixed size, in the speaker 64 byte cache line block. In order to store variable size block, VSC divides the data array into small segments, in this example, 8 byte segments, and less compressed lines take a variable number of segments. And the tag now not only stores the address of the cache block, but also a pointer to the data array, indicating where and how many 8 bytes segment a compressed block takes. Now, given that the data array can store more cache lines than conventional caches, VSC also increases the number of tags, in this example, by two times, to track more compressed lines per set. VSC thus allows fast access to compressed cache line in each set and can store them compactly. Now the missing piece here is how fixed size cache line become variable size block, which brings us to the other part of the baseline, the BDI compression algorithm. BDI leverages the redundancy within a cache line and compresses it by storing a base value and the small deltas. In this example, in a 32-byte uncompressed cache line, every 4-byte four, four value has a relative small delta that can be represented with just one byte. Therefore, BDI will compress this cache line into a 4-byte base value with 8 1-byte deltas and saves 20 bytes in the space. In the actual implementation, BDI supports many formats with different base and delta sizes and will find the, base, uh, the best combination for a given cache line, and will compress them as much as possible. The advantage of BDI is that it provides reasonable compression ratio with simple hardware implementation. Now that we have a good understanding of both schemes, let me explain our first attack, pack and probe. Pack and probe lets the attacker measure the compressibility of a cache line. And our threat model for this attack is the following. First, the attacker and victim run in different production domains. Second, they share a compressed cache. Third, the attacker knows the compressed cache architecture and the algorithm. And finally, the attacker knows which set the victim's target line or secret line belongs to. This can be achieved using standard techniques such as prime and probe. And the goal for the attacker is to find the compressed size of the target line. 
In the next few slides, I will going to show a concrete implementation on VSC architecture, and I will discuss generalization later. Pack and probe consists of two phases. First, the attacker packs the target set with lines of known sizes, leaving S free segments in at least one free tag. For example, if S equals to 4 and the total number of segments in the set is 16, the attacker can use one line that takes 8 segments and another line that takes 4 segments to leave exactly 4 segments. Knowing the compression algorithm, the attacker can make those two compressed lines by writing patterns to its own cache lines that belongs to a target set. Then the attacker waits or triggers the victim to access the secret cache line. In the second phase, after the victim accesses a target set, the attacker probes all lines used to pack the target set. And if all lines result in a cache hit, that means the space we left is large enough to store the secret line, which means the size of the compressed victim line is smaller or equal to S. And if there's any misses, that means the opposite, the victim line is larger than S and thus causes eviction to attacker's cache lines. Then, by doing a binary search over S, the attacker can find the exact size for the secret line. Using pack and probe, the attacker can already learn something from the victim. For example, if the algorithm always compresses repeated patterns with pack and probe, the attacker can passively learn if the secret data is a repeated pattern or not. Moreover, we found that the attacker can steal the data more efficiently in a more damaging way. The key idea here is to exploit attacker-controlled data co-located with the secret in the same cache line, similar to the earlier example I shown at the beginning of the video. And that inspires our second attack, SafeCracker. For SafeCracker, we assume the same threat model as before, except a new assumption. Attacker can get victim to co-locate attacker-controlled data near victim's own secret data. There are multiple co-location vectors that can enable this. For example, the victim itself co-locates with them with back-to-back -back memory allocation or stack spills. The attacker can also exploit memory safety violations such as buffer overflow and heat spray. The high-level picture here is that, like the earlier example, SafeCracker changes attacker control data to reveal nearby secret data through changes in compressibility, and it measures this change with the prag and probe attack. The search algorithm will have to be tailored to the compression algorithm, but here is a concrete implementation of SafeCracker on the BDI algorithm. In this 32-byte cache line, attacker control data is co-located with the secret data. The content of the first 28 bytes is controlled by the attacker, and the last 4 bytes is the secret of the victim. Starting from the largest delta, the attacker will sweep the higher order bytes until it sees the changes in the compressed size using the first attack. For example, the first attempt fills all zeros in higher order bytes, and BDI would not compress it because the secret is far from this value. The second attempt fills 0x001 in higher order bytes, and again, compression does not happen. When the attacker fills 0x0f00 in higher order bytes, now, all four bytes values in the cache line, including the secret, are close enough that BDI compresses it into a 4-byte phase and 2-byte deltas. When the attacker observes this change in the compressibility, it knows the attempt was correct and matches the higher order bytes of the secret. Then the attacker starts sweeping the lower order bytes until all bytes are recovered. For example, the attacker now fixes the higher order bytes as 0x0f00 and switches the next two bytes until the pattern of 0xba. This further decreases the deltas between all values and BDI compresses it even more. And finally, when all 8 byte values are the same, it reaches the smallest possible compressed size, which lets the attacker know the last attempt was exactly the secret value. The BDI algorithms allows recovering up to 8 bytes in this way. And the number of attempts increases exponentially with the size of secret. Given this, in practice, stealing 8 byte might be too expensive. However, it still leaks non-negligible amount of data. Nonetheless, we also found out that 
the attacker can recover the secret more efficiently when combining safe cracker with buffer overflows. Using buffer overflows, the attacker can control how many bytes the co-locate data has, and by repeatedly performing buffer overflows with different buffer sizes, the search can be more efficient. And the attacker can leak data far away from the buffer, for example, to recover a byte value. Now the attacker only needs to recover a different byte individually at a complexity of 2 to the 8, instead of the complexity of 2 to the 32 in the previous example. And since the buffer overflow vulnerability lets the attacker touch any cache line in victim's memory, assuming BDI compression algorithm, the attacker can leak up to one eighth of the victim memory. And other compression algorithm would allow even more leakage. We evaluate safe cracker using simulation and simulate a multi-core system with an A megabyte compressed less of a cache. We implement two proof of concept workloads. The first one mimics a logging server that statically collocates secret key and the attacker provided data. And the second one has a buffer overflow vulnerability that the attacker can exploit. Our evaluation shows safe cracker steals secret quickly. The left figure shows the execution time for both victim and attacker when the attacker tries to use safe cracker to learn a secret in different sizes. The y-axis shows the execution time in milliseconds in log scale up to the second. The x-axis are the sizes of the secrets to recover. And we evaluate up to 6 bytes due to the simulation limitation. Sipcracker leaks 4 byte secret in under 100 milliseconds, 6 bytes in 200 milliseconds, which is comparable to the time spending running conventional technique like prime and probe to find the target set. However, recovering a byte would take much longer. Nonetheless, when exploiting the buffer overflow vulnerability, Safecracker can leak secret more efficiently. The right figure again shows the execution time for both victim and attacker. When the attacker tries to use Safecracker combined with buffer overflow to learn a secret in different sizes, now Safecracker can leak a byte secret in about 10 milliseconds. And the time to complete the attack grows linearly with the size of leak bytes instead of exponentially. While we target a specific baseline implementation, our attacks can be generalized to other compressed caches. This is because most compressed cache architectures allow conflicts among a small set of lines, so pack and probe still applies, with some exceptions discussed in the paper. More importantly, no matter what algorithm used, compressibility always leaks information about the data. The better the compression algorithm is, the more information it leaks. Moreover, for those techniques with shared states or dictionary, they in fact add additional attacker vector to the system. Now, a question you might ask is how to defend these attacks? One simple solution is to provide isolation via cache partitioning, which prevents attacks without software changes. The issue here is that the technique must partition both tag and data array to provide full isolation which actually limits the benefit. This figure shows the distribution of weighted speed up from 20 workload mixes, each with four concurrent spec CPU apps for four different schemes, conventional cache baseline, baseline with partitioning, compressed cache, compressed cache with partitioning. Each line is normalized to the baseline cache and sorted from left to right along the X axis according to the improvement achieved. The higher is better in this figure. Two solid lines are the ones without compression, and two dashed lines are with compression. With no partitioning, compare the delta between the yellow dashed line and the blue solid line. You can see compressed cache provide clear benefits over baseline. But with partitioning, compare the delta between red dashed line and green solid line, the benefit decreases. And this is because partitioning increases fragmentation in VSC reduces the effective compression ratio. Thus, com cache compression does not fully solve the problem. Before I conclude, I would like you to know that we have many more in the paper. For example, we discuss other possible defenses, we show examples of potentially vulnerable real-world apps, we also discuss generalizing attacks in detail, and our artifact for the evaluation is publicly available. So please check out our paper. To conclude, we present the first security analysis of cache compression and show that compressed caches introduce new side channel and attacks. 
Our first attack, Hack and Probe, exploits compressed cache architectures to observe compressibility of victims' lines. Our second attack, Safe Cracker, exploits compression algorithms as well as collocation of attacker controlled data and secret data to leak secret quickly. In the worst case, this can leak a large fraction of programming data, as damaging as speculation-based attacks. We also show that defenses has drawbacks and would lead it to future work to address. We hope that this work prevents insecure cache compression techniques from reaching mainstream processors, averting a potential security crisis. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to share with us.